Good morning. I'd like to record Free Code Camp's basic HTML and HTML5 under their responsive web design. <clears throat> I notice they have a lot of these five 14 hour courses, so um, you're welcome to this file to put it on your thing if you want. And in fact, if you go down to the bottom here, you can make a tax deductible donation to them. <laughs> uh, they're they're a, a good online source. And uh, I'd certainly, I like their HTML course. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset all code, reset this lesson. So, <clears throat> and uh, we're just going to go through this. So, welcome to Free Code Camp's HTML coding challenges. These will walk you through web development step by step. You'll start by building a simple web page using HTML. You can edit code in your code editor, which is embedded into this web page. It's the thing in the middle. Do you see the code in your code editor that says h1 hello forward slash h1? That is an HTML element. Most HTML elements have an opening tag and a closing tag. So the opening tag is that h1 on the left, and the closing tag is that forward slash h1. The only difference between opening and closing tags is the forward slash after the opening bracket of a closing tag. Each challenge has tests you can run at any time by clicking the Run Test button. When you pass all tests, you'll be prompted to submit your solution and go to the next coding challenge. To pass the test on this challenge, change your H1 element, that's your Heading 1 element, right, to say Hello World. So I'll go up there and I'll type in world. And then I'll hit control enter. And it says you've got guts, 100% complete. And then control enter to move on. All right, headline with the HTML element. So the last, the very first one that we did was the hello to HTML elements. Now we're doing headline with the HT uh, element. Over the next few lessons, we'll build an HTML5 cat photo web app piece by piece. The H2 element you'll be adding in this step will add a level 2 heading to the web page. That's why it's H2. H1 would be a level 1 heading, right? This element tells the browser about the structure of your website. H1 elements are often used for main headings. H2 elements are generally used for subheadings. There's also H3, H4, H5, and H6 elements to indicate different levels of subheadings. Okay, so they want us to add an H2 tag that says cat photo app to create a second HTML element uh, below our hello world element. So uh, you'll use the, uh, what is it, the less than sign, then h2, and then the greater than sign. Now um, I will use control C to copy that and control V to paste that. And then um, <clears throat> forward slash H2 greater than sign. And you see on the right-hand side, it, it lists the cat photo app. You could read the um, beakers down at the bottom to ensure that you did the stuff up at the top. It would be ideal for you to do this yourself without watching this, but if you get stuck somewhere, you can come and, and watch my video to help you through whatever your issue is. 
So control enter will check it and then control enter again will move to the next thing. The next thing is inform with the paragraph element. P elements are the preferred element for paragraph text on websites. P is short for paragraph. You can create a paragraph element by, like you did with the H1 and H2, instead you'll have a P and forward slash P at the beginning of end. So now they want us to create a P element below our H2. So it's going to have P and then it's going to have the forward slash P to close it. Um, give it the text, hello paragraph. All right, so I will control C and control V that. Make sure you open and close that, right? Because uh, that's easy to forget. And then uh, control enter and control enter. The next section is fill in the blank with the placeholder text. Web developers traditionally use lorem ipsum text as placeholder text. The lorem ipsum text is randomly scraped from a famous passage by Cicero of ancient Rome. Lorem ipsum uh, text has been used as a placeholder text by typesetters since, setters, <laughs> since the 16th century, and this tradition continues on the web. All right, so uh, they say five centuries is long enough. So since they're building a cat photo app, they want to use something called kitty ipsum text. And they want to replace the text inside the P element with a few words from the kitty ipsum text. So I'm just going to highlight the whole thing, and I'm going to do Control-C, highlight the... Uh, the P element text, hello paragraph, click control V to uh, verbose, to paste all that, and then control enter to verify that, and control enter again. Now, uncomment, uncomment HTML. All right, so commenting's a way that you can leave comments for other developers within the code without affecting the resulting output that is displayed to the end user. So comment is not run by your program. It's for other people to read or for yourself, right? Uh, Commenting is also a convenient way to make code inactive without having to delete it entirely. So like in a game like, say, Mind Test, if you want to shut off a particular monster, you could just comment out that monster. You know, so I mean, this commenting idea to make code inactive works anywhere, literally, just about. All right, comments in HTML start with the less than exclamation point and two dashes and end with two dashes and a greater than sign. So to uncomment uh, the H1, H2, and P element, we're just going to delete, I'm going to highlight and backspace over those and then control enter to check that and that is complete and then control enter all right next is comment out html all right so in order to start a comment you need to use that less than exclamation two dashes likes at the top and you need to use the two dashes and the greater than to end it so you need to end the comment before the H2 element begins. So let's copy down the two dashes and the greater than sign there. And uh, hit enter to make a, uh, another line. Okay, so comment out your H1 element and your P element, but not your H2. So actually I skipped the H2 so I use my mouse to go to line six. What's line six now? And then I'm going to start by using the less than exclamation point and two dashes 
that with the two dashes and the greater than will comment out the P. Notice they turn green when we commented them out, but the cap photo app did not change color in the center. So we pretty well know that it's been commented out. You can also look on the right side of the screen to see that all that stuff has disappeared. So we just hit control enter to uh, verify and then control enter to go to the next challenge. Next section is delete HTML elements. All right, our phone doesn't have much space, vertical space. So um, they say remove the unnecessarily unnecessary elements so we can start building our cat photo app. Delete your H1 element so we can simplify our view. So we don't need hello world in there, right? So uh, I'll highlight it and backspace, and you see it's just cat photo app now. And uh, the H, so the H1 element was deleted, the H2 element is on the page, and the P element is on the page. You could see the three beakers there that we've satisfied that. Control enter and then control enter again moves us on. Now introduction to HTML5 elements. HTML5 introduces more descriptive HTML tags. They include main, header, footer, nav, video, article, section, and others. Um, by the way, I really hope Free Code Camp doesn't mind my doing this. Um, HTML5 introduces more HTML tags. These include main, header, footer, nav, video, article, section, and others. Okay, uh, those are HTML descriptive tags. The tags give a descriptive structure of your HTML. They make your HTML easier to read and help with search engine optimization, SEO, and accessibility. The main HTML5 tag helps search engines and other developers find the main content of your page. Example using uh, of usage uh, is by putting a main element with two child elements nested inside it in the following example. So, I'm not going to go over that, but many of the new HTML5 tags and their benefits are covered in the Applied Accessibility section. Create a second P element with the, the following Kitty Ibsen text. Okay, so I will uh, put it at the end of the last line and hit Enter to create a new line. Uh, there may be other ways to create a new line. And then greater the less than sign, P and then the greater than sign, and it will close with the forward slash uh, P. Um, and then in between those two, um, we need the second kitty ipsum test. So control C and control V. Let's see, so two child elements nested inside it. Then create main element and nest only the two P elements inside the main. So I'll go to the second line there and uh, put a main element in there. Okay, what did I just do there? We, we did this, right? Control enter. Oh, did it reset the whole thing? I wonder what happened here. Maybe I resetted the c 
code by accident. So, you know, the H2 tag, that's fine, so, you know, because people don't have to watch this. Cap photo app and uh, forward slash H2. And uh, control enter. Gotta go fast. Um, P elements. So uh, they wanted a P element below the H2. So we'll just throw that in real quick. And they want hello paragraph. And then control enter. Um, this is something I would definitely consider if you have the money uh, for them. Control enter. Oh, uh, it put us to the next page. Um, replace the text inside the P element with the kitty Ibsen. So control C, control V, control enter. And uh, we just wanted to end commenting out stuff. And I, we wanted to keep the H2 element in the middle uncommented. And that's where we saw the green on either of them and control enter. Oh, uncommenting. Oh, my bad. Okay, so let's do that real quick. All right, everything is uncommented. Comment out your H1 element and your P element, but not your H2. Okay, so that's that's what we were going to do in the previous one. Okay, you can see the green there. Control enter. Keep on trucking. All right, now that we're to the phone, your delete your H1 so we can simplify our view. So I deleted the H1 and then control enter. Okay, are we where we got cut off? Introduction to HTML5 elements. Yeah, we read that. Um, example usage, create a second P element. Okay, so let's create the second P element. So um, we have the open and forward slash P to close the P. Get the kitty ipsum text. Control C to copy. Control V to paste. And it says create a main element and nest the two P elements inside. So I want the main element inside the greater than, the less than and greater than. And then I want the forward slash main inside the greater, the less than and greater than. So now the two P's are nested inside the main HTML5 tag. The various tags were main, header, footer, nav, video, article, and section. We nested it inside the main, control enter, and control enter. Now add images to your website. You can add images to your website by using the IMG element 
and point to a specific image's URL using the SRC attribute. An example of this would be, and they give an example where the SRC equals is inside that IMG element. Notice the IMG elements are self-closing, whatever that means. All IMG elements must have an alt attribute. I don't see an alt one up there. The text inside an alt attribute is used for screen readers to improve accessibility and is displayed if the image fails to load. If the image is, note, if the image is purely decorative, use an empty alt attribute, using an empty alt attribute is a best practice. Ideally, the alt attribute should not contain special characters unless needed. Let's add an alt attribute to our image example above. Oh, okay. So they put the alt in the element um, and whatever the, oh, so the alt is probably when you don't see the image, it'll put those words there. So it, they put it in quotes, in this case, a business cat wearing a ne necktie. So if this source if, with the website in quotes here, if that image doesn't display, I guess the alternate would be this text being there. That's what it sounds like to me. Let's try to add an image to our website. Within the existing main element, okay, so you see the main up here, insert an image element before the existing P elements. So you see the two P elements and there's a little space here. On line three, we're gonna insert an image element so looking at the uh, inside the existing main element. So I guess they mean image here. Now the source attribute they tell us. So you do src equals quote notice it opens and closes the quotes and it they tell you the url so i'll highlight what's the shaded area hit control c and then in the quotes i'll do control v and you see the image appears on the right hand side and uh, they want an alt attribute with appropriate text. Uh, okay, so we'll say alt um, equals quotes, and we'll just say cute cat. How about that? Um, and it already has the quote, close quotes, and we should close the brackets here for that element. So the image element um, I mean, close, so open, I call them brackets, but it's the less than and the greater than signs are creating the bracketing the elements. Uh, image has the source attribute. Your image elements, alt attribute should not be empty. We have cute cat there. So um, control enter and control enter. Now, link to external pages with anchor elements. So you can use A, anchor elements to link to content outside of your web page. They can also link within the page, by the way. A elements need a destination web address called an href attribute, H-R-E-F. They also need anchor text. Here's an example. So they put the A, the H, ref, then the text that goes for that. So that's the text that you're going to see on the screen. And when you click that text, it's going to go to the link that is given by the H, R, E, F equals. So that's what, that what it means, the anchor, it anchors it to that website. 
Um, and then, of course, you close it with the forward slash A. All right, then your browser will display the text. This links to freecodecamp.org. You see freecodecamp.org. As a link, you can click. And that link will take you to the web address freecodecamp.org. Create an A element uh, that links to freecatphotoapp.com and has cat photos as its anchor text. All right, uh, let's see. So they left space up here under main. So let's put it there. Let's. Um, I'm going to say bracket, but it's really a less than a href equals quote, and it's going to link to freecatphotoapp.com. Control C, put it in there, Control V. Um, Let's see. And has cat photos as its anchor text. So you want to put the greater than sign, close brackets. All right, so that's the anchor right there to freecatphotoapp.com. Now we need to write the anchor text. And that's going to be cat photos. Okay. And now you notice all the blue stuff, we need to close, we need to close the anchor. So the greater than um, forward slash a, and then, uh, I mean, less than forward slash a greater than, you know, we bracket the closing portion of the element. Now you see just cat photos, and if I click that, it goes to this page, cat photos here, which is, that's pretty cool. Um, create an ele element that links to and has cat photos as its anchor text. All right, let's see, control enter. and I hit control enter again. Link to internal sections of a page with anchor elements. So A, anchor elements can also be used to create internal links. I mentioned that in the last one. To jump to different sections within a web page. To create an internal link, you assign a link's href attribute to a hash symbol. That's the pound sign, the number sign plus the value of the ID attribute for the element that you want to internally link to, usually further down the page. You then need to add the same ID attribute to the element you are linking to. An ID is an attribute that uniquely describes an element. Below is an example of an internal anchor link and its target element. So notice the uh, href with the pound sign says contacts header. Then some other element has the ID equals and it has the same word contacts header. So apparently you click the, the A anchor text and that anchors you to an internal item at another element with the that ID equals attribute being the same as what's in the pound sign. When users click the contacts link, they'll be taken to the section of the web page with the contacts heading element. So they want you to change your external link to an internal link by changing the href attribute to pound sign footer. So you see the href up here. Inside that is the web address. Instead of using a web address, we're going to link it internally. So we put a pound sign, the number sign, 
and they say change it to the word footer, F-O-O-T-E-R. Okay. So, and the text from cat photos to jump to bottom. So here's, I guess they call it the anchor text. Instead of cat photos, we will uh, put jump to bottom there. Okay. So remove the target equals blank attribute from the anchor tag since this causes the linked document to open in a new window tab. So target equals quotes underscore blank is going to move the web page when you click to a new tab. So uh, where was that? Target equals blank. So let's remove target equals blank so it doesn't go to a new window tab. Um, then add an ID attribute with the value of footer to the footer element at the bottom of the page. So let's go to the bottom and I see footer down there. So in the footer element, just like in the H2 example, there's a space here. I'll do ID equals quotes and then a pound sign, the same word I used up at the top, footer. Oh, no, I don't need pound sign. Sorry about that. It's the word, I, this word footer is the ID. See, footer. The pound sign says it's an internal link, right? And then it, it needs to look for the ID tag. So at the bottom of the page. So I did that. So that should work. Jump to bottom. And uh, you, you saw it go up? If I click ju jump to bottom, it clicks up a little bit because it's moving me to the bottom. So if I do control enter, okay, we got that. Go to the next item. The next item is nest an anchor element within a paragraph. You can nest links within other text elements like P, uh, um, oh, I see. So the anchor element inside the paragraph, they put the anchor element in there. You see the A target equals and the href. The target equals blank puts a new tab. The href is the website. Then uh, the rest of the anchor tag linked to here is the words for the anchor tag. And then they close the anchor tag within the words for the paragraph. Okay, so it says let's break down the example. So I'm not, I'm not actually going to read that if you don't mind. Target is an anchor tag that specifies where to open the link. So target equals blank is a new, a new tab. The value blank specifies to open the link in the new tab. The href is an anchor tag attribute that contains the URL address of the link. Yes. So you see the href inside the anchor tag. All right. So the text linked to freecodecamp.org within the A element is called anchor text. Those are the words. The words are linked by what's in the href portion. Okay, the final output of the element will look like this. Here is A. Notice the link part is highlighted, um, and that will go to freecodecamp.org. Nest the existing A element within a new P element. Do not create a new anchor tag. All right, so do we, is there an existing A element here? Yes, there's an existing A element up here. They want it inside a P element. Okay, so let's do P, and we need to close it. So let's, in order to remember, I do it immediately so I don't forget. Okay, so the, it's nested inside the P element. I did the opening and the closing. Do not create a new anchor. 
the new paragraph should have text that says, um, view more cat photos, where cat photos is a link and the rest is plain text. Okay, so, All right, the text says view more should, uh, so control C to copy the view more part because cat photos is the link. The view more is not the link. And then at the beginning of that, control V to paste that. Okay, so, and I put a space there. So the anchor text, cat photos is the link and the rest is plain text. So I believe we satisfy everything here reading that. So all I had to do is write the words view more um, at the front here before the anchor tag is. So it's control enter and control enter. All right, make dead links using the hash symbol. All right, so you might ask why would we want to make a dead link? Sometimes you want to add A elements to your website before you know where they are going to link. This is also handy when you're changing the behavior of a link using JavaScript, which we'll learn about later uh, at the freecodecamp.org website. The current value of the href attribute is a link that points to freecapphotoapp.com. Could see that right up here. Replace the href attribute value with the pound sign or hashtag, also known as a hash symbol, to create a dead link. For example, href equals quote hash close quotes. So I'll try to remember to use the word hash uh, instead of pound sign. So I highlight that and um, the pound sign is over the number three on my keyboard. Okay, so the href is a pound sign, so that shouldn't go anywhere. So that's a that should be a dead link now because there's no href. It's just the hash symbol. Control enter. Cranked it up to 11, whatever that means. Uh, I'd be tempted to search those words, cranked it up to 11. All right, but anyway, control enter. Turn an image into a link. Okay, so if I put the arrow over the cat right now, you notice it's still an arrow, right? Because that photo is not a link. So it says here you can make elements into links by nesting them with an A element. In other words, you can use an anchor element in a paragraph like you did last time, but you can also use an anchor element with an image, for example. So um, we're going to nest the image with the anchor element. So place the existing image within an A anchor element. That's going to be our goal. So how are we going to do that? So we go to the image. And remember, we hovered over that, and it's just an arrow. There's nothing. Okay, so at the beginning of the image line, I put A to make uh, anchor text. Um, does it say where existing image elements should be nested within an A? Okay, so... There's the beginning of the A, and I'll close it at the end here, forward slash A. All right, and once you've done this, should become a link clicking pointer. The photo is now a link. All right, well, let's make it, let's give it an href because I, I, um, 
Well, let's first close this, see if it gives us the photo. Okay, so it gives us the photo. It's not telling us to give... All right, so we nested it with an A element. Look, it's not linking to anything. So I'm going to give it an href since that's the practice that they say uh, with the hash symbol. Hope you don't mind. Um, because we don't, we don't, there's not, oh, uh, wait a minute. Okay, we've done that. Now you see the finger instead of a, remember at the beginning there was an arrow? Now there's a finger because that's linking, but it's an empty link because I put a hash symbol there. I wonder if, I'm gonna click the photo. See, nothing happens clicking the photo. If I delete that href, and I click that, notice there's nothing there. It's an arrow. So I have to put href. St uh, now it looks like a link. I guess it's probably just good practice to put the hash symbol there. I don't know. All right, control enter, and we got it. Okay. All right, create a bulleted unordered list. So HTML has a special element for creating unordered lists or bullet point style lists. Unordered lists start with an opening UL. That's for unordered list, right? Element. Um, followed by any number of LI. That would be list elements. Finally, unordered lists close with a forward slash UL forward slash ul stands for unordered list, right? For example, and they give an example, ul with several li's in the middle, which are going to be bulleted on the right-hand side here. When we enter them, there's going to be bullets. Um, in this case, it's milk and cheese. So it says remove the last two p elements and create an unordered list of three things that cats love at the bottom of the page. Remove the last two P elements. So I'm assuming by remove the last two P, I should remove um, these two P elements. So I remove them. And now they want an unordered list. So as my habit is, I do UL and enter forward slash UL. So I remember to enclose, so I remember to close this correctly, okay? I do both the opening and the closing of uh, the UL element. Okay, and now we're going to have LI, and it says three things. So it's going to be LI and forward slash LI. And I will control C that, then enter control V, enter control V. All right, so those are three dots. They're empty dots right now because I haven't written any of them. Three things that cats love. So what are three, some things that cats love? Well, we know they like catnip. So I'll put catnip there. Um, uh, cats love food. Whenever you see, they see food, they go running. And they'll start rubbing up against you and purring and everything. And uh, they like catnip. They like food. And uh, they like to be petted. So those are three things that at least the cats I know uh, tend, I've known tend to love. All right, and uh, control enter. 
And uh, you see all three of those items are on the bulleted. Bulleted is an unordered list. Control enter. So UL for unordered list. They put catnip, la laser pointers, and lasagna. All right, I didn't know about the lasagna. All right, create an ordered list. So now we want a list that's like one, two, three. HTML has another special element for creating ordered lists or numbered lists. Ordered lists start with an opening OL element, followed by any number of LI elements. Okay. Ordered lists followed by any number of LI. Finally, ordered lists are closed with the OL tag. Okay, I mean, the forward slash OL. Oh well. We close just about everything, it looks like, with the forward slash uh, tab, repeating it tab. So they give an example of an ordered list, uh, and it says it will create a numbered list. Uh, these two items, they'll have one and then two. So create an ordered list of the top three things cats hate the most. Since I see they say here top three things cats hate, I am going to hit, um, I'm going to start typing underneath that the things that cats hate. And I will do an OL for ordered list. And actually, before I do anything else, I'm going to also put the forward slash OL in the brackets so I know that. Uh, I will not forget that to close it. And then I'll just go up there. And now we're going to need three things. So I'm going to have LI, and then I'm going to have forward slash LI. So I'll control C that, and control V, and control V. So there's three items here. You see the empty one, two, and three on the screen. All right, so what are three things that cats hate the most? Well, we know they hate water. I had a friend who used to spray his cat with water gun to keep him out of one of the rooms because uh, the person he was living with had an allergy. Uh, or uh, he had an allergy. Uh, cats uh, do not like dogs. My wife suggested that a lot of times dogs can irritate cats, but not always. Uh, there's always exceptions to water and dogs and things like that. And um, I said cats like to be petted. Uh, um, I'm going to say played with because sometimes cats don't want to be messed with and they get irritated. So they like to be played with. They also don't like to be played with. So, and that is cats for you. All right, and you notice as I type those, I it entered it in the one, two, and three. All right, control enter. And you see that um, and whatever by the power of grayskull means and control enter. All right, create a text field. Now let's create a web form. Input elements are a convenient way to get input from your user. You can create a text input like this. Input type equals text. Note that input elements are self-closing. Okay, whatever that, oh, uh, it's just brackets on either end you don't need to put the forward slash input at the end of that. That must be what self-closing means, looking at this example up here. Okay, so tell me if I'm wrong. Create an input element of the type text below your list. All right, your, your app should have an input element of type text. All right, I don't know. I'm going to put it on 19 here. Um... And I'll just write input type equals quotes text and close bracket 
And you see there's this little thing here. You can, um, hello, you, you can type stuff in there. So it creates a box where you can input stuff. And control enter will verify that. And control enter moves us to the next section. All right, add placeholder text to a text field. Placeholder text is what is displayed in your input element before your user has inputted anything. You can create placeholder text like so. Okay, and they give an example here um, where they have the word placeholder equals. And so I believe the placeholder text, the part in the quotes, you'll see that inside of the box. Remember that input elements are self-closing. So you don't need that forward slash stuff. You just bracket the end of it. Set the placeholder value of your text input to cat photo URL. So you see we have the input and the type. Now next to that, we'll put the word placeholder. equals and quotes, okay? And they want the input to be, now I believe that placeholder will go in the box here. So let's type in those quotes, cat photo URL. And if you look, you see in gray there is cat photo URL. So that's the placeholder for where then you would enter the cat photo URL. And then control enter. And uh, look at that, 100%. Says coding spree, exclamation point. All right, we're on a roll, folks. Control enter. Uh-oh. Okay. Whew. All right, we're on create a form element. Create a form element. That is, that's down here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sections to go. More than, looks like we're more than halfway done. Introduction to HTML5 elements. HTML5 introduces more descriptive HTML tags. These include main, header, footer, nav, uh oh. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Create a form element. Let's see. Add a placeholder text to a field. Didn't we just do this? Placeholder. equals quotes cat photo URL control enter the town is now red whatever that means and control enter all right create a form element you can build web forms that actually submit data to a server using noth nothing more than pure HTML. You can do this by specifying an action attribute on your form element. For example, form action equals URL where you want to submit form data. Then uh, they have input and then forward slash form. Nest the existing input elements inside a form element and assign the um, web link to the action attribute of the form element. Hmm. Nest the existing input element. So do we see an existing input element? 
down at the bottom there, inside a form element. So above that, I'm going to put the word form. I'll close the bracket and then enter. And then after the input, I'll do forward slash form. And so I have nested in the form element. It says assign to the action attribute. So inside the uh, first part of the form element, I will write the word action equals quote. Actually, they have the quotes there, so let's just copy this. So I'll do control C, then control V. Did anything change? Okay, I don't think anything changed. The existing input element should be nested within a form element. We did that. Your form should have an action attribute set to the free capphotoapp.com. We did that. Your form element should have well-formed open and closed tags. Uh, I have the form opening tab and form closing. All right, let's try control enter. Okay, that's good. All right, can, um, spool up the FTL drive, whatever that means. Control enter. All right, add a submit button to a form. Let's add a submit button to your form. Clicking this button will send the data. I'm, I'm sorry about the background noise. Let's add a submit button to your form. Clicking this button will send the data from your form to the URL. You specified with your form's action attribute. So submit button to your form, action attribute. Here's an example, submit button. Button type equals submit. All right. Add a button as the last element of your form element. Okay, so you see form here. This is our form element. It's the last element of the form element. So let's get a line there. Okay, that line is in the location where the last element of the form element would go. It says add a button. So that would be the word button. With the type submit. So space type equals quote submit close quotes. Um, I'm going to close the S-U-B-M-I-T, submit. All right, add a button at the, as the last element of the form element with a type of submit and submit as its text. So next to the um, greater than sign goes your text. This is typical in commands, and they want the word submit, capital S, and then U-B-M-I-T, as its text. All right, and then we need a closing section for the button. So let's close that with forward slash button. Let's compare it to this one. Okay, and uh, control enter. And then shiver me timbers. That sounds like Popeye. <laughs> that actually dates this a little bit. The fact that I know that and somebody, whoever put that up there. Because uh, I think most of you don't even know who Popeye is. All right, control enter. 
And I, it would be a good idea to support them if you have the money. All right, use HTML5 to require a field. You can require specific form fields so that your user will not be able to submit your form until he or she has filled them out. For example, if you wanted to make a text input field required. By the way, if there's some noise in the background, I'm in a house with a bunch of people, so I'm just, I have to apologize. All right, HTML5 to require a field. You can require specific form fields so that your user will not be able to submit your form until he or she has filled them out. For example, if you wanted to make a text input field required, you can just add the attribute required with your input element. Like this, input type equals text and then the word required. All right, so it says here, make your text input a required field so that your user can't submit the form without completing this field. Then try to submit the form without inputting any text. See how your HTML5 form notifies you that the field is required. Okay, so first let's click Submit. Thank you. We will review your submitted response and reply if needed. So actually, I'm going to click run the test just to get that back on. There we go. Okay, now under where it says input type equals text, I'm going to write the word required, just the way they have it in the example up here. Right next to the word text. All right, now let's click submit and see what happens. See the exclamation point, please fill out this field. So you see putting the word required right up against the type in quotes has changed the nature of that box. And now we do um, control enter. The crowd goes wild. Yay! Control enter and we're in the next section. All right, create a set of radio buttons. You can use radio buttons for questions where you want the user to only give you one answer out of multiple options. Radio buttons are a type of input. Each of your radio buttons can be nested within its own label element by wrapping an input element inside of a label element, it will automatically associate the radio button input with the label element surrounding it. All related radio buttons should have the same name attribute to create a radio button group. By creating a radio group, selecting any single radio button will automatically deselect the other buttons within the same group, ensuring only one answer is provided by the user. Here's an example of a radio button. They have the word label and the closing label for the element, and then the input type is radio. They, the name gave it some kind of label, and the word that, I guess, is indoor there. It's considered best practice to set a for attribute on the label element with a value that matches the value of the ID attribute of the input element. This allows assistive technologies to create a link relationship 
between the label and the related input element. For example, so um, the ID attribute down here is indoor. Type name. Then they put uh, in the label element, they have four equals indoor and that matches the ID attribute indoor. Um, this allows assist of it. Okay, so you could see it down here. Um, the for attribute is set to the same item as the ID attribute of the input element and the four is in the label. We can also nest the input element within the label tags. So if you have the label, then the input is between the words, the label elements here. Okay, so they flip that around a little bit. All right, add up, so that could be confusing when they're flipping stuff back and forth to people. Add a pair of radio buttons to your form, each nested in its own label element. Uh, radio buttons, radio buttons, okay. Each nested in its own label element. One should have the option of indoor, and the other should have the option of outdoor. Both should share the name attribute of indoor outdoor to create a radio group. All right, so are there any labels here? Um, see input type. Button type. I don't know. Let's try putting it at the end here. So um, each has to be nested in its own label element. So that means, and it's a pair of radio buttons, so it's two. So let's do label and then label, um, we want forward slash label, okay? That's one pair and then label and forward slash label is the second pair, okay? Nest each each of the radio buttons must be labeled in its own label element. So I have two label elements. Now we need radio buttons. Radio is a type of input. So let me enter. And now let's put input. And the type it says is going to be radio. Okay, so uh, it says a pair of radio buttons. So this one also needs an input and the type in the directions is radio. I believe that's these two buttons here. Make sure you close your brackets. Okay, each nest in its own, one should have the option indoor. So the ID equals one should have the option indoor. Put that in quotes. And the other should have the option of outdoor. So that's 
ID equals outdoor. Okay, both, and that's before, I put it before the type, just because he did, they did before the type up here. Both should share the name attribute of indoor, outdoor. So uh, after the type like they did, I'm going to do the name equals, quote, indoor dash outdoor. Control C, go down here, Control V, because they both have the name indoor, outdoor. To create a radio group. Okay, so the names create the radio group. Um, so the label. The for attribute matches the ID attribute. They say it's good practice. So why not where it says label for equals quote indoor and this label matches that ID attribute for equals outdoor. Okay, so the for under label matches the ID under the um, input attribute. Okay, I have two radio button elements. Um, Name attribute, label, indoor, one label, outdoor. So, and actually, why don't we label it indoor? and label this one outdoor. Hopefully they don't mind me doing that. Control enter. Oh, I need a form tag. Within the form tag, so Here's the form tag. So let me hit enter to make a space at the end of the form tag. Let me copy this stuff that I did and do control C. Go up here inside the form tag and control V. Then delete what I wrote um, between the word form and main so that I moved everything um, my radio buttons here and that notice it puts it on the same line as the cat photo URL and now let's hit control enter and it says bodacious whatever that word bodacious means actually uh, control enter to go to the next one. You know, if we go to WordNick, and then I type in the word bodacious, that's remarkable and impressive. Well, thank you very much. Remarkable and impressive. If you've listened to all of this so far, you're bodacious too. 
So introduction to HTML5 elements. HTML5 introduces more descriptive HTML tags. These include, oh, uh-oh, uh-oh, did it um, reset me? Oh, here, create a set of checkboxes. Okay, let's just check that. Um, create a form element. Got a responsive web design. Go down. We created a set of radio buttons. I know that. And control enter. Okay. Let's see. So we're back here again. Each of your radios should be within the form tag. All right, so we're going to do this again. All right, so we're supposed to have... Um, so we're repeating this exercise here. It wants us to have a pair of radio buttons. So they're going to be two inputs. Input. Oh, each nested in its own label element. So let's do a label. Label pair means two of them. Forward slash label. So there are two label elements there. Okay, we'll do one with the option indoor. So the label for equals indoor and now we want the input the ID equals indoor they say it's radio buttons so the type equals radio see when you get the circle and the name attribute name equals indoor dash outdoor and I'll put the word um, indoor. Okay, that's the option of indoor. Now I'm going to control C this and control V it. And in the label, the other one is going to be four equals quote outdoor for the label. So the input instead of outdoor, uh, instead of indoor, will be outdoor. And so this word I'll put outdoor next to it. And then I'll control enter. And it says storm the castle, control enter. All right, create a set of checkboxes. Forms commonly use checkboxes.
for questions that may have more than one answer. Checkboxes are a type of input. Each of your checkboxes can be nested within its own label element. By wrapping an input element inside a label element, it will automatically associate the checkbox input with the label element surrounding it. Okay, so the input will be in the label element. All related checkbox inputs should have the same name attribute. Okay, so if they're re related, they get the same name attribute. It is considered best practice to explicitly define the relationship between a checkbox input and its corresponding label by setting the for attribute on the label element to match the ID attribute on the, of the associated input element. Here's an example, and I appreciate that they give examples. And they have label for equals, input ID equals the same thing. So the input is nested in the label element. So you see each of your checkboxes can be nested in its own label element. Here's an example. The input is nested in the label. Add to your form a set of three checkboxes. Okay, we need three. Each checkbox check should be nested within its own label element. All three should share the name attribute of personality. Since it says add to your form, we find the section of this that has the word form at the beginning and end and I'm going to add it to the end of the form section. See the word form here at the end? I am before that. Now they want three checkboxes, each within its own label. That means I'm going to have three things that say labels. So it's going to be label, forward slash label, Label, forward slash label, and label. Like I said, I'm in a house full of people, so you're going to hear different sounds in the background for the different people. All right, so I set up three label sections there. There. Each of the checkboxes are going to be nested in its own label element. So, um, and uh, they want to uh, nest a checkbox, so I need the word input in there. So, um, So I'm going to have an input nested inside of a label. So input and input. Okay, so there's there's the three input boxes, three check boxes, each should be nested within its own label. All three should share the name attribute of personality. So inside of input, you have name equals quote personality. Control C, Control V, Control V. 
Okay, so the name attribute. So your page should have three checkbox elements. Your three should be nested in its own label element. Each of your label elements has a closing tag. They're all closed. Your checkboxes should be given the name attribute of personality, name personality. Each of your checkboxes should be added within the form tag. Okay, let's try control enter. And control, uh, that says checkmate. That's from the game of chess, by the way. So, of course, you have to be familiar with chess. And you don't see too much about chess um, because chess is a board game and we now play on the internet. And our games can be much more sophisticated. So, the word checkmate also dates this a little bit and dates me as I used to be a regular chess player. But anyway, control enter. So whoever wrote the free code camp thing here is a little, <laughs> like we know you're a little older, I think. Control enter. Okay. So use the value attribute with radio buttons and check boxes. All right, when a form gets submitted, the data is sent to the server and includes entries for the options selected. Inputs of type radio and checkbox report their values from the value attribute. Whatever that means. When a form gets submitted, the data sent to the server includes entries for the options selected, all right? The input types are radio checkbox. They report their values from the value attribute. Okay, so the value attribute is the value they report when you check them, I guess. So each label has the input in there. And the value attribute is listed in there. Here you have two radio inputs. See, type is radio. When the user submits the form with the indoor option, the form data will include the line indoor dash outdoor equals indoor. That's because the value equals indoor. This is from the name and value attribute of the indoor input. If you omit the value attribute, the submitted form data uses the default value, which is on. In this scenario, if the user clicked the indoor option and submitted the form, the resulting form data would be indoor-outdoor equals on, which is not useful. So the value attribute needs to be set to something to identify the option. Give each of the existing radio and checkbox inputs the value attribute. Do not create any new radio or checkbox elements. Use the input label text in lowercase as the value for the attribute. Okay, so it's radio and checkbox. So if we go down here uh, where the form was, you can see the type is radio and the type is checkbox. Those are the ones that we're going to have to work with. Um, each of the radio and checkbox inputs the value attribute. So where the word input is, after the word ID, you get value. So here you see ID equals. I'll do value equals quote space 
I'm going to close my quotes. Um, oh, there is already, it looks like there's another quote there. All right, let me quote. Okay, it gave me both quotes. Oh, I see. I Did I need a space over there? All right, value, um, value attribute needs something. Each value, do not create any new. Use the input label as the value. So let's see, the input label. Where is the I see the word label. Oh, um The input label text. The input label text. So I'm assuming that that input label text is the ID like it is up here. So that would be indoor. So let's go down to the input again. Put a space space after the ID, do value equals, quote, outdoor, matching the ID equals outdoor. Then go down to the next input, value equals, quotes, quote, loving, close quote, then value equals, quote, lazy, all right, so these are all properties of cats. So you see input, I want to insert the value, quote, energetic, close quote, space. You see it's listing them by the boxes down here. And um, then the next input okay, that's not radio or checkbox. So we did all the radio and checkbox items. We gave them all a um, Value, we need to have equals, value equals. Do they all have value equals? Value equals, value equals, okay. Um, as the vowel, uh, okay, and now let's do control enter. Escape velocity reached, control enter. All right, check radio buttons and check boxes by default. You can set a check box or radio button to be checked by default using the checked attribute. To do this, just add the word checked to the inside of an input element. For example, so you have your input 
type equals name, and notice they added the word checked at the end there before they close the bracket. Set the first of your radio buttons and the first of your check boxes to both be checked by default. So um, look at it's where the input is at. They put checked at the end there. All right, so first of the radio buttons. Go down to the form, see radio. I find where it says input. And just before that, I'll put the word checked. And notice the dot is filled in. See the dot filled in down in the lower right? And it says, so that is in the radio. Now we go down to the first checkbox. I look for, I'm looking for where it says input. And that element there, the beginning of the element thing, I'll put the word checked in there. And loving is checked. Okay, so radio is circular, checkbox is square. And then I hit control enter. You're out of sight. Control enter. All right, nest many elements within a single div element. The div element, also known as a division element, is a general purpose container for other elements. The div element is probably the most commonly used HTML element of all. Just like any other non-self-closing element, you can open a div element with div and close it on another line with forward slash div. Nest your things cats love and top three things cats hate lists with all within a single div element. Let's see, so things cats love. So I'll put it on this line here, this empty line. Um, It does give a hint, try putting your div tag above things cats love p element, which is what we're doing. Okay, so put div, div, and we want to close it after the top three things. So there's a space at the end there, the um, ordered, lines, uh, the one, two, three element at the end of the closing element for the ordered lines. I will put the bracket forward slash div to close the div element. The ul and ol should be inside the div and I have a closing. The p elements are nested inside the div element uh, for the things cats love and things cats hate. Okay, so let's do control enter. Bullseye, control enter. Declare the doc type of an HTML document. We're almost done folks. The challenges so far have covered specific HTML elements and their uses. However, there are a few elements that give overall structure to your page and should be included in every HTML document. At the top of your document, you need to tell the browser which version of HTML your page is using. HTML is an evolving language and is updated regularly. Most major browsers support the latest specification, which is HTML5. However, older web pages may use previous versions of the language. You tell the browser this information by adding the doc type tag on the first line, where the dot 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 part is the version of HTML. 
for HTML5, you use exclamation point dot type HTML. The exclamation point and uppercase D-O-C-T-Y-P-E is important, especially for older browsers. The HTML is not case sensitive. Next, the rest of your HTML code needs to be wrapped in HTML tags. The opening HTML goes directly below the doc type HTML line, and the closing HTML goes at the end of the page. Here's an example of the page structure. Your HTML code would go in the space between the small between the two HTML tags. So you have the doc type, and then you have the HTML tags, and then your HTML code goes in the middle there. All right, add a doc type tag for HTML5 to the top of the blank HTML document in the code editor here. So I do the bracket, exclamation point, capital doc type. Um, and that doc type is HTML5, so I write HTML in there, and then I close the bracket. Uh, now, is that supposed to be red? <clears throat> Under it, add an opening and closing HTML tag. So um, we'll do our HTML word like we do with elements, except the element is uh, the the outer element. Our code is like the child of this grand HTML uh, element. So the doc type, HTML, HTML tags could wrap around one H1 element. So uh, H1, I need an H1 in here. So H1, um, thank you for watching, and uh, I hope you are learning or this is helping you. Don't forget to close your H1 element. Um, yeah, that looks like everything, so control enter. Cool Aid Man says, Oh, yeah. Control Enter. Define the head and body of an HTML document. So we're almost done. You can add another level of organization to your HTML document within the HTML tags with the head and body elements. Any markup with information about your page will go into the head tag. Then any markup with the content of the page, what displays for a user, will go in the body tag. Okay, so you see down here they have the head tag and the body tag within the major HTML element. Metadata elements such as link, meta, title, and style typically go inside the head element. Here's an example of a page's layout. Okay, so with the HTML, they put the head and they stick the meta inside there. And then they have the body and they have the div inside of there and all of them nested in the HTML. So we need to edit the markup so there's a head and body. The head element should only include the title. And, and the body element should only include the H1 MP. So it says the head should only include the title. So before the word, I hit enter, before the word title, I'm going to um, start my head element. And after the title, I am going to close the head element, for forward slash head.
Okay, so. The head element includes the title. The body should only include H1 and P. So I see H1 and P here. So I'll hit enter and I'm going to label that body. Uh, that's the body element. So at the end of the P paragraph, I am going to do forward slash body. All of them nested within the HTML and the page headed by the doc type HTML for HTML5. All right, and now if we do control enter, gotta code them all. Gotta code them all. Control enter. Change the color. And that actually color goes with, if you look, we just did the HTML and HTML5. Everything down up to define the head and body of an HTML. Change the color is the CSS. CSS is like the describing stuff. So thank you for listening. I hope this helps. And I hope Free Code Camp didn't mind my doing this. Thank you.